Hi, I'm Denise. In this video, you will see a series of four abstract paintings. And for the first 20 minutes or so, I've pieced together a whole bunch of small snippets of my process and progress from start to finish and stitched them together. And then I've done a voiceover explaining what I'm doing. And then the last sort of five minutes, I've got the four paintings hanging up on my wall and I talk about the qualities that I was looking at and defining how to define them, what, what, I, what I was looking for so that I would feel that they were done, they were finished. Um, as making abstract is still fairly new territory for me, um, I'm find, I find it really quite challenging sometimes to know when they're done, but it's a feeling and it's, and if you've come up with a list of qualities of things that what you're seeking in your work, then it, that's quite helpful because then it gives you something to look for and you can tell if it's there or if it's missing. And sometimes maybe I need to remind myself that um, you might not need all 16 qualities that you like in one painting. Um, as it happens, these are quite busy, which I'm finding interesting even just to contemplate and consider as I look at them. I don't know that I will ever make paintings like these again. I think these are a stepping stone pieces to where I'm wanting to go because I have a desire for more simplification, really. Um, so, so it'll be interesting, but I did feel that they were beautiful enough to me to have them be complete as they are and not keep painting over the top of them. So I share the process with you and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for, thanks for visiting. Okay. So where I'm just starting off is using some ink um, just to free up, make some marks, very random. Um, but just start to feel the energy flowing, making some marks. That's a palette knife, smearing some paint down. I have no idea where I'm going with things at this point. I'm just bringing colour. I've chosen a palette, but I am um, just bringing colour to the surface and making as many different marks as I can think of or not think of. I'm taking it all the way around the edge just in case the board didn't get framed in the end. But as I'm telling you, the, these are off getting framed at the moment. I'll show you at the end. Well, there's the palette there. That gum tree green, I've quite enjoyed always, already having a neutral mixed and I can just white it down and, and it's been quite lovely. That would be a Neo Color 2 crayon, I think. They're water soluble. And then just more paint. Sorry, I didn't show you the palette, but it's just um, a wet towel thing with um, either tracing paper or baking paper spread out on the tray. And you wet the under the, the cloth underneath, and it keeps your palette um, damp for a while. Okay, so I'm starting another one this time. I'm starting with pencil and just letting it wander over the surface. It's a really nice feeling doing that. Um, and again, the palette knife. So two very different marks already. That's Prussian Blue by Golden, which is so delicious. Um, that made me really happy even just seeing that colour. And it's quite yummy mixing the new, very pale neutrals and the whites straight on when another colour next to it's wet. So a little bit of that can come in and you, you get mixtures that you that, that are more spontaneous. I'm bringing the ink back in. It's acrylic ink so it's good quality ink just like the paint quality and, but it's, it's much more um, susceptible to, to running like that with water. Just taking things for a walk, you know, with the brush. 
trying to stay loose that's my one of my goals is trying to stay loose at this point and and so so there's just so many things then you can choose from after as to what you'll keep and what what will go the more marks you put on the more you can sort of choose from I was going to break this up into the four separate video, um, videos of each one, but it became too complicated. So you'll see the progress of the four different paintings in this video. And um, yeah, it's, it's a new uh, arena for me to be videoing progress of paintings and, and showing them. So I, I'll just do it from time to time at the moment when I feel really inspired to. Um, but yeah, it is, it's quite lovely for me to have as well. Later in this video, um, I have them all four hanging on the wall and I recorded in real time at that. So this is me talking over it later after I've edited the, all the little snippets together. <clears throat> and I've sped up, in some cases I've sped up four times and then sometimes I've sped it up 20 times. So in actual fact, I'm usually um, quite quite a slow and contemplative when I'm making a painting. And I don't usually go at it like a bull at a gate and just go mental, even though the speeding up of this makes it look like I might be. Um, no, these I've just sort of been, I will be pausing and thinking and feeling into it and wondering what next and often making the marks kind of slowly. But for time's sake in a video, um, I just didn't think that would be reasonable to leave them at real time. Um, yeah, so some of these are significantly sped up. That might be my rubbish truck, so sorry if some noise comes shortly. I might be able to pause it if I can when he comes by. So yeah, there you go, when the black was wet, that grey arrived, and that while it's still wet also, I'm doing scraffito, which is a blunt little thing that's used for embossing, I think. So I've numbered them trying to, uh, so we can keep track as to what, how they were, and then how they finished. They all ended up really quite different, even though it's all the same palette, same artist doing different marks on each one. They all had quite a different personality at the end, which was great because then they could actually hang as a group. It wouldn't look like, you know, you're just trying to do the same thing four times. That's a Neo Color crayon. If you have any questions about what you see me using in this video, you're welcome to ask a question below. I'm happy to come and ask, answer it. Um, I'm still getting used to the whole world of YouTube and um, how much information people do want. Or, if, you know, so if you've got questions, you're welcome to ask me. I think from memory that colour was gold. This would be an ochre, yellow ochre. And that green could be jade green, I think. And that is, I believe, Prussian blue crayon. So the same colour as the paint. Um, so that gives a bit of harmony using different media, but the same colour. Oh, now I'm using some matte medium to seal the crayon marks. I was using fixative for a while, but I don't like the smell. But I also don't like how it went weird when I came back with a water-based um, varnish. It, it made really strange texture and freaked out. So now I'm trying this. So I'm smoothing matte medium over the, the um, water-soluble crayon. To seal it so that I'll be able to um, use wet media over the top and it shouldn't loosen that crayon like it would if it wasn't sealed. 
So I'm pretty excited about that, um, finding that, because I don't mind texture. I actually love texture. So if there's an uneven surface made by the matte medium, I'm okay with that. I actually like it. Um, so yeah, with me, with if I pick up paper, I prefer the watercolour paper with the tooth and, and the texture rather than the smooth. That's my preference. It's nice working together as a group of four so that some of the continuation of the colors but some of the marks you know I was doing sort of some of those bumps and um, circles in another one so I can bring them into the new one but just do them differently but then they all relate they're kind of talking to each other they're like they're in the same family those are those marks being on the dark there's a bit of contrast um, but there's sort of almost a quiet conversation in the dark, which is I love. And then the light lights having lighter marks, that's like a quiet conversation in the light. There it's sealing it again with the matte medium. Here comes my rubbish truck. That's okay. So that dries clear, so that's okay. The original marks there, I think, were made with my fingerprints in wet paint. And then I believe that's a gold colour crayon. like I've put the same piece of video twice maybe oh no maybe not such a newbie at this <laughs> Probably just trying to simplify, I think. Just taking editing out some things, making way for something else to come. Hmm. I took them to a place and then wasn't sure what to do next. They were with me for weeks, maybe even months in the end. Until I just decided I really, really want to bring these home, like to themselves. I want to, I want to finish them. I like to be careful what mood I'm in when I come to finish paintings, though. And I have to feel like I'm up for it, you know. I don't want to just ruin them for no good reason. I think I decided that mark, that black mark was not interesting enough. So I thought I, I, I'd bite into it there with a bit of white. And that, that is just sort of like glazing with a watery white. So just taking that mark down a bit 
that's Prussian blue straight on the surface and then smearing it with a, with a knife, which I particularly love. And see how it gets these very interesting marks when um, there's texture underneath the surface. When you use that palette knife, you get that textural surface showing up with that, which I really love. And I guess that creates another quiet conversation in the dark there. Just adding some water, trying to get some drips. Just meandering a line to kind of give you some ways of your eyes to cross over that dark. You know, almost like a river or a way through it so it doesn't um, end up just one big thing. I think that was the idea there. Breaking it up a little bit. Really an unknown territory when I'm doing this. <laughs> just trying things, trying things all the time to see if they work. I realize I really love high contrast. I really love very lights next to very darks. So, you know, I'm learning, learning by doing. You, you learn more by doing um, to discover the, the marks that make you feel really happy. That is putting a stencil over wet paint and using a chucks cloth to lift the stencil off instead of using the stencil to create the dots, I was removing the dots. Oh, I wasn't happy with that. trying to bring a bit of definition so as so though the painting's been considered it, it knows what it wants rather than it I just threw everything at it and, and walked away I want I want there to be um, I want to I suppose I want it to look like this there's, there's care being taken as well you know And looking for how to make different marks, different feel, um, different shapes that aren't already there. So that's how come those square ones arrive there. And then with the end of the brush, another different mark. But it becomes harmonious because it's the same colours. Oh, I think that, that might have been another idea, that breaking up that large piece with the white. I don't think I, I mustn't have recorded the piece where I put some ink. I think this is the one I put some ink where that white is so that the white looked dripping down. And then those same drips ended up um, cracking. So I didn't mind that. It became an interesting mark, even more interesting than what I intend, had it intended because the very white drips coming down had looked too stark. So when they all cracked, it gave all these tiny wee lines that I didn't plan. That's using Squirrefito, carving into wet paint. Some more ink. I particularly love making those wiggly lines. It feels really satisfying. And our dried grapevine, after it had cooled around various things, I found a little piece of it and it looks exactly like that. So it was quite lovely. In morning tea one day this week, I discovered that nature showed me that very like tiny line. And I see it on the scribbly gums out when I'm walking as well. So those marks um, sort of delight me.
And that was a case of, you know, that felt nice, so I just sort of kept going. If something feels nice, just keep doing it sort of thing. And bringing a little bit of transparency into some areas because we've got the deep dark blue, so then it gives me some other transparent blue. And there there are us hanging up together. Oh, there's that drip I was telling you about. So there I put a wash of water over that probably might have been, that's what made it crack, I'm not sure. Oh, very satisfying when I decided, I think these are almost done, I'm going to sign them. Um, that felt satisfying, <laughs> except oh, I keep going a little bit. <laughs> I think I shared each one of them getting signed because it just felt important that I'm, this is calling it done for the most part. And, they, and I really loved how they looked in their frames. I'll show you again at the very end of the video. But um, it was by bringing the frame along and popping each one in that made me feel that they were finished. It really, really helped. So I encourage you to have a frame lying around if you can. So this series, I spent quite a bit of time coming to and fro, back and forward a little bit. Um, I'll share in another video some of the earlier parts of the process that came to make these. But I wanted to talk about them at this point while they're in this group of four. And in the middle of the night last night, I came in and um, a list of things came to me of how I want to sort of appraise these to help me find the roadmap to finishing them. Because in some respects, when I look at them, um, I think I could call them done. But I've come up with this list to run through it with me because I, I still, I think because abstract is still sort of fairly new for me. It's only been two or three years that I've been dabbling in this. Um, it feels really challenging for me to know uh, where, when's finished and what to keep, what to let go. And so I came up with this list um, of qualities that I'm looking for. So that might be a little bit uh, moving around with my hand there. So, um, so yeah, I think the qualities that I'm looking for are spontaneity, elegance, quiet conversation, loud conversation, energy or energizing. Now I want it to feel energizing. And I guess that speaks to the does it make me feel alive? Um, that's important to me. Uh, there's, I want depth, I want playfulness, richness of layers or colour, a special moment, whimsical, and a variety of marks, shapes and patterns. So there's quite a lot there that I'm seeking. And as I was rewriting that list out, because I want to stick it in my art journal, um, I realised I might have to be careful to not look for all of those things in every single painting that might be too much so that's what I'm what looking at now as I'm appraising these four paintings where are they too much or are they too much um, so yeah that's what I'm hanging out with as I'm looking at these and just wanted to share a little bit about that there's also a quote that I think applies here is that small paintings need to feel powerful and large paintings need to feel intimate. Now I don't know exactly who said that, um, I'll see if I can find out somehow, but I really love that. It's interesting to me how much you seem to be able to fit in a small canvas and even with my small figuratives I end up crowding them a little bit sometimes. And I wonder, with a large 
one would you do the same maybe not there's something different about having that small window that i've got in these ones that are only um, 12 by 12 inch or 30.5 centimeter by 30.5 centimeters um, so yeah that's what i'm hanging out with is i'm going to bring hang out with these and and look at them for what's what I'll go through that list of qualities and just sort of see and actually another thing that's really interesting is when you pop them into a frame it changes everything as well so I'll share that with you as well So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you want to come back and visit me and keep in touch. And I'm going to be doing the best I can to bring out a new video each week, um, maybe two for the first little while. It just depends. I um, want to do some vlogs and the odd demo and just see what what I'm inspired to make and I'll just go ahead and do it because one of the beautiful benefits I noticed after last week finally deciding to upload um, a couple of videos onto my channel and share them with my list and have beautiful souls come and watch the, my video and comment it was really energizing to me um, it's like when you're very creative there's a lot of energy that wants to run through you and so I feel like it would be wonderful if this is a container that I can pour some energy into and it's re and I, I, it's received, it's wanted. So do let me know if you enjoy the video and if you have any questions about the content and, and uh, materials I used, uh, for sure just ask in the um, comments below and I'd be happy to let you know. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.